This episode is brought to you by Communications Training for Coffee Teams, a new Mapper Forward workshop tailored to get your team communicating more confidently to improve general mental health as well as business profitability. Click the link in the show notes for further details. Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Forward, friends. I'm your host, Lee Safar, and this is episode two of our five part series with Andrew Tolley. Andrew, we are talking about the state of coffee education in the coffee industry. And in the last episode, we spoke about the different kind of courses that are available, the different, um, the types of courses. And we talked about certifications. We talked about, um, micro courses and different educations. And you gave us a real hierarchy of the different ways that people can learn today. What we're going to talk about is what are some of the pros and cons of those different kinds of education programs and who are they applicable to at different stages in the in their career something you said in the last episode was really poignant um, and something that i wish that we focused more on in this industry which is when you're training a barista you got to give them the next step of their career like help them understand what comes next and i think that in this episode we could talk about how we can can help people do that by understanding which different courses apply at what part of your career? Yeah, sure. It's a a great question. It's one of the biggest challenges, I think, for people around coffee education. So we've gone from being in a state where there were very limited resources, right? Mm -hmm. So 15 years ago, there was very limited amount of education you could choose from, um, Mm -hmm. which made choosing education much easier because there was just nothing. You had to learn yourself in some way, shape or form. Um, But now we've got um, a whole spectrum of different um, ways in which you can learn. And so the challenge is what is the most effective way for me to learn uh, or for my employees to learn, depending on whether you're looking at this from the perspective of an employer or as as, um, a coffee enthusiast who wants to learn more. Um, And then then, so which which is the best option for me to learn um, for the next stage of of my Mm -hmm. development? And um, so we we covered in the last episode the diplomas from the Specialty Coffee Association. We covered the certification program like that offered by um, the um, Coffee Excellence Center at the Zurich mm-hmm. School of Applied Sciences. Um, we covered micro courses, um, then online communities, um, and uh, and so on. Edutainment, I called it. Edutainment. Um, um, so there, there's a huge... Um, array of of information but if you're um the way you can really think about it is from the perspective of if you're an individual okay who's looking to progress in their career Mm. um, you have to start with yourself okay so what is my current level of skills Mm -hmm. what skills do i need to obtain in order to get to the next level where do i want to be in five years if five years is too far out where do i want to be in six months okay 12 months whatever Mm. it is your current prioritization sort of time frame. Um, and, and then you think to yourself, how do I get there? Um, you've, you've got, um, I think there's probably a formula you can, um, you can, you can use to help you make this decision. Okay. It's, it's, it's let's call it a value formula. Okay. For, for coffee mm-hmm. education. Um, and you're basically weighing up um, the, time it's going to take and the cost of something cost of the education um, in order to gain the skill set and the knowledge that you need for um for achieving um your your next career goal Mm -hmm. okay and so the reason it's worth thinking about time and money is because in most cases if you spend money now you will accelerate the rate at which you can learn Okay, mm-hmm. so by investing in courses which are which are paid courses, um, you're getting a much more concentrated um, uh, learning level experience, of knowledge, skills, and learning experience. So you can come away and kind of move up, move forwards faster. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's, uh, but for some people, either their time is is not. Um, not the limited resource okay so they've got much more time um, so that you don't need to learn as quickly Um, and so you can look at other options and then in some cases um, uh, you know uh, the uh, money's money's the limited resource Mm -hmm. and you just don't have 
that option of, of investing a lot. So you've got to go down a different route. Um, so once you, so what you really need to do is think, um, where am I in the industry today? And mm -hmm. where do I want to go? Because this is, um, you, you need to uh, evaluate what your set of skills are, what job you're doing now, what what skills you've um, accumulated over the course of your life effectively mm -hmm. and um, and how do I how do I move on so an example I often use is if you're a barista in the industry and you want to become a coffee trainer then um, quite often a barista has a very good set of knowledge they've got mm -hmm. that shop floor experience they know how to talk about coffee with customers they know how to do a little bit of on the job training to support people to develop their skills but they don't have the training experience okay so right. tra training is a skill um, which we'll talk about in, in, in a future episode but how do you then gain those training skills to um, be able to sidestep from being a barista to becoming a trainer the same would be progressing to becoming a roaster so you know if you are a barista who loves um, loves making coffee and uh, and wants to become a coffee roaster because it helps you sort of deep dive into the world of, um, of um, you know, buying and sensory and green coffee and then roasting it. Um, you know, how do you, how do you transition from, from the barista role to, to the roasting role? Um, and so these, um, the, the, I guess the, um, the, if we're, if we're to sort of follow that, um, follow that um, example, Mm -hmm. Then as a barista, um, you've probably tasted a lot of coffee. You've got experience of um, dialing in coffee and, and making shots of espresso. But um, what's your experience of cupping? Okay. You need to develop right. cupping skills. What's your experience of actually understanding uh, roasting, the chemistry of roasting, um, everything that's happening in the roaster? Um, so in that case, because it's such a significant jump, you're probably better off if you want to move straight into roasting and you want to show a business that you're a passionate um, coffee professional who can roast, you may want to just say, right, I'm going to do a roasting course and then right. and then go there. Okay. So you can, yeah. So my question there is, and I get this from people all the time. Lee, what's the best roasting course to take in the world? Mm -hmm. How are people finding, you know, if we're looking at the pros and cons of different yeah. types of education programs, how do people know how to assess what the pros and cons are of specific programs? How do people know what the best roasting course for them is to take? Yes, exactly. So, um, and this is... Um, there's, there's a couple of simple questions you could ask, right? So if mm -hmm. you wanted to become a roaster and um, you are developing a relationship with your local roaster, you say, look, I want to, I want to roast for you. Okay. Um, and I'm thinking about um, what courses will allow me to become a roaster for you. Mm -hmm. So you could actually ask that roaster, do you actually recommend any courses? Um, okay. And, and then, so that would be, that would be one way to do it. And it's very like, uh, purpose driven, right? You know mm -hmm. that you've got your the roaster target, you've got um and you can mm -hmm. ask them who you expect because that will be um the, the um a really effective a guide. way to, to guide you into it. So I think um industry respect is a big one. Mm -hmm. Um I think the credentials of the roaster as well. Okay. So um of the the training provider, you know, what are, what is their background? What is their experience? Um so I I always talk to um, talk about people like Coffee Mind, so Morton Munchau, because um, he has a very science-backed program. He has affordable um, entry-level courses and then high-level courses. He's um, <clears throat> did, he's uh, delivered um, or he's he's worked on the curriculum for the SCA courses. So mm -hmm. it's not just about um, his own. Uh, roasting and consulting business it's about giving back to the community so he's done a lot of things which which show that he has um, credentials and depth in um, in providing roasting education mm. um, so really scrutinize scrutinize that trainer and their, and their background um, and look at look at their experience get um look at testimonials as well mm -hmm. <clears throat> so people who have done that course what are they doing now Okay, so um, not just you know find find people who have made recommendations and then actually trace trace where they've gone mm. from 
um, from doing that course to um, come to uh, into their sort of professional um, um, development. So that's another way to do it. Um, and then obviously um, with the diplomas, mm-hmm. uh, you've got um, industry backing here. Okay, so right. um, one of the great things about SCA is that that program is now being supported by, it's got an um, international network of accredited mm-hmm. professional trainers. Mm-hmm. It's got an NFT is. Um, they're taught how to train. You've got a curriculum which is developed on a volunteer basis by industry professionals, and then it's scrutinized by industry professionals as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and you've also got the research background of the Specialty Coffee Association, which is now feeding into the um, the education program. So yep. um, again, you can rely on that. Um, mm. But I would still <clears throat> I would still be um talking to any employer who's who you're interested in working with or experienced people on the ground um Mm. you know what do you value in terms of coffee education um and then if if um money is a limited resource then you can be much more um entrepreneurial as well you can uh find a friend meet someone there are plenty of like really supportive friendly generous people in this industry Mm. Ask someone if you can follow them around for a day. Okay. Yeah. Get actually a great experience. idea. Because right? the other thing that's um that's important is um actually knowing that the job that you think is the right job for you is the right job for you. Okay. So that's what work experience is all about, right? You did <laughs> Do an internship. Maybe. Don't yeah. be scared of it. Yeah. Do yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Your dad wants you to become a, an accountant or something and you go to an accounting firm and you realize this. Stuff. So, I yeah. hate this. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know but, that. Go on, please. I was just going to say, but I mean, that, that, that can happen for a lot of baristas, you know, baristas mm. often love being a barista because they love talking to people. They love it's a social people. Yeah, you go and become a roaster and you're like stuck on a machine for, for 12 hours a day. It's it's not yeah. it's not that much fun. Yeah. Or people who say that they want to open a cafe and realize they actually loved being a barista. And once yeah. you've opened a cafe, you'll rarely get to spend like maybe one shift a week, if you're lucky, on the machine because you're so busy actually running the business that yeah. you don't get the time to, to be a barista anymore. Something yeah. that I wanted to mention before we wrap up this episode, though, is how important do you think it is for students to know what the way they learn is? Because when we're talking about someone like Morton who does present things very scientifically, mm-hmm. if you have students who just don't learn well that way, they learn hands-on, I think it's really important to, for students to understand when they're choosing what the right course is for them to be yeah. very familiar with how they learn. Do you agree? Yes, absolutely. And there's, there's, um, there is that sort of, um, there's a, there's a, there was a, there was a theory that people are either kinesthetic, so they're, they're yeah. like on or they're, they're visual or they're like listening, mm-hmm. um, they have different learning styles and actually, um, people can learn in all three. So everyone's able to learn in all three but they'll have a preference for a particular stuff. Mm. But the most effective way to structure um, educational material is to provide um, all three different forms Mm. so that people can, um, you know, if you're, if you're not strong at listening, then it's good to have a transcription of the recording of the, of the the video. So Mm. you can actually um, read the text as you're going along, or you can watch, watch at the same time and so that's um that's a way to get around the different different learning styles um if you find um something like the the scientific way in which morton presents something difficult to follow Mm -hmm. um then roasting may not be for you because Mm -hmm. roasting is a lot of that that experience there's an element of um you know there's a lot of sensory involved in roasting depending on the size of the business and so on but you know, it may just be that if you're not into understanding convection, conduction, and radiation as different forms of heat transfer into a, into into coffee, um, if that doesn't float your boat, then then roasting may not float your boat because you've got to really understand some of those simple mm-hmm. things in order to um, understand the foundations of roasting. So that's a good way to understand what the skill set is um, that you have or don't have and where you need to go. Yeah, beautiful. 
We will head into the next episode, folks. Join us for the next episode. Uh, Peace, love and peanut butter. Have an amazing rest of your day. Thanks for tuning in, friends. There are two ways you can support this podcast. Firstly, become a paid member of our YouTube channel. Secondly, you can join our Patreon for as little as $3 a month. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video before you leave and check the show notes for more information. Now, this is what you should check out next.